Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city. For under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. Take this row right here. Well, will this take long, Lieutenant? Not too long, Mrs. Wheeler. I have to do my shopping for the weekend. It won't take long. Did you catch the man? Well, we don't know. We picked up everybody in the area that has a record or looks suspicious. Well, I hope you have got him. Well, it would be May easy. I have your attention, Awful please? Awful to have a man like that running around loose. Yeah. You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? <coughs> Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner, as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took How your many name are we going to look at? Oh, moment. half a dozen or so. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the bathroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice. So do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, all right. Move up to the end of the stage. Right on up to the end. Keep it moving. All right, turn and face front. Hands to your sides. Look straight ahead. You take off your hat. Okay, number one, Leonard Foster. Disturbing the peace. State your age and where you live. I'm 42 years old. I live at 109 West 88th Street. And you know darn well I wasn't disturbing the peace. That's the charge, Leonard. I was walking along, minding my own business, doing nothing. I get hauled in. For no reason, you haul me in. He ain't got a charge till you say I'm disturbing him. What am I, what am I disturbing, I want to know? Five arrests, two convictions. Yeah, a long time ago, sure. Petty theft, possession, vagrant. Yeah, I know what I've done. I've done 180 days for what I've done, but I ain't done it lately. Just answer my question. I get here rolled in with disturbing the peace because I ain't disturbed nothing. Eh, I give the arrest and officer a little trouble, sure. Because I know you got nothing on me. Ah, uh, Leonard. And he tags me with a phony charge. Just because you can't pin nothing on me. And you want me down here. All right, that's enough. Okay, I'm down here, but I ain't done nothing. You all through shooting off your face? Some guy shakes a screw loose and shoots up the towels for you holding everybody with a record. I don't go around shooting nobody. Number two. Or disturbing the police. Shut up. Number two, Edward Clark. Hello, Sergeant. Where do you live, Edward? Same place, Sergeant. Tell the people. 215 West 110th Street. Where do you work, Edward? Oh, I'm the point job. You've still got ten months to go on your parole. Yeah, yeah, look, we all know why we got picked up. Yeah, for nothing we got picked up. I told you to shut up. He? I know my rights. All right, get him out of here. Come on, you. I want a lawyer. Run him down to the tank and let him cool off. I'll move. Okay, okay, but I know my rights. All right, Edward. What were you doing when the officer picked you up? Walking. Where? No place, just walking. Nothing else to do. I didn't shoot nobody. I never even come close. Okay, number three. State your name and where you live. John Eggleston, 110th and in Orange. You've got quite a record, John. Not for killing nobody. You know about the killing? Sure, some psycho gets wild with a gun and kills everybody in sight. He killed seven people, wounded three. Pretty psycho. Number four, state your name and where you live. Thomas Cashin, 53376. You were picked up a long way from home. I'm a wanderer. What were you doing when the officer picked you up? Window shopping. You were picked up a block away from the shooting. Yeah, I even heard it. But you kept on window shopping. None of my business. Sounded like backfires to me. You don't know the difference between backfires and gunshots? Me? Well, how would I know? 1938, arrested on suspicion of armed robbery. 1939, breaking and entering, served a year and a day. 1941, suspicion of murder. Same year, convicted and served three years for armed robbery. <laughs> Make a heck of a movie, wouldn't it? Number five, state None your name. None of these men are the one you're looking for, Lieutenant. Sure, no, right. How about the rest of you? you I don't see you? him. No, he's not up there. No, 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 no. You said you were leaving no. your girl. Uh, Sergeant uh, Greb. Uh, yes, uh, yes, Lieutenant. Uh, no identifications. Run on the next bunch.
Pine Beach. Yeah. Well, I didn't expect an identification on any of those boys. The man we're looking for is... He probably doesn't even have a record. Well, we'd better get him in a hurry. The whole town's yelling for an arrest. He's a mental case. No doubt about that. No motive in his killing. Shoots anybody indiscriminately. Seven people just walk down the block and shoot him. Have you looked at the uh, ballistics report? Yeah. Ties in with what the witnesses said. Said it was a big gun. Lugo automatic pistol. Yeah, machine pistol. Well, what do we do? I think he's still in that area. Look at figures that he lives somewhere around there. Why does it figure? Well, that gun he had was a pretty big gun. Couldn't possibly carry it in his pocket. He's not going to walk very far with it before using it. I think he walked out of his house or wherever he was staying, started down this block, first person he saw, he killed him. Maybe he drove a car. No, 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 that's no good. If he had a motive, sure. If he had a reason for killing those particular people, if he planned it, but... No, this was just insane, wild massacre. Was anybody he saw, anybody on the street? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Well, look at the first person he shot, a five-year-old boy playing on his roller skates, walked up to him and killed him. Ten people he shot like that. Seven of them dead, maybe an eight. No, I'm convinced he probably sat around in his room, this thing eating at him, made up his mind, walked out, started down the block and went crazy. Well, if you're right, you've narrowed it down to a pretty small area, and somebody in that area must know him and be able to recognize him and tell you who he is. Well, we've got a fairly good description from the witnesses. Nobody recognized him, but they all gave a fairly accurate description. Let's give it to the police artist. Let him draw up a picture. Uh, where are the witnesses now? I've got all five of them down looking at the mug file. Mrs. Wheeler keeps yelling she's got to do her weekend shopping. Uh, she mentioned it to me several hundred times. She's probably got a grouchy husband. Yeah. Uh, go get him, Matt. Now, if you'll all just sit down, please. This is uh, Mr. Collins. He's going to listen to your descriptions of the killer and try to reconstruct his likeness. Uh, Mr. Case? Yes, Lieutenant. As nearly as you can, will you again tell us what this man looked like? Why, certainly. He was... Uh, uh, Judge, just a minute, please. Now, the rest of you, if you have anything to add, speak up. If you disagree, say so immediately. All right, Mr. Case. Uh, well, uh, he was about as tall as the sergeant. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was about... Uh, you're about uh, six feet, aren't you, man? Close, within a quarter of an inch. And he was thin. He was wearing a white shirt. Uh, just a minute. Yes. Uh, you said he was thin. How thin? What would you say he weighed? Oh, I guess about 160. Oh, thinner than that. My husband weighs 160. He was thinner than that. Well, he could have been. I'm not a very good judge. Yeah, more like 150. Mm -hmm. You all agree? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yes. All right. Yeah. Uh, he was wearing a white shirt, Mr. Case? Yes, a white shirt and dark pants. I don't know what color pants. I brown, I think, brown. Uh, he was wearing... Uh, just wearing a shirt, no coat? Oh, that's right. And in this weather, too. Well, that makes it look more like he didn't walk too far. Shirt and brown pants, huh? Mm -hmm. That's right. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Uh, no, I can't. Either. The rest of you? I can't think of anything. No. All right, now, this is really important. How many of you got a really good look at his face? Good enough so you could give an artist a description fairly close. Uh, raise your hands, please. Everybody but Mrs. Wheeler? Oh. I only saw how he was dressed, Lieutenant. All right, Mrs. Wheeler. Now, uh, we'll start with the complexion. Uh, uh, Lieutenant. Yes, Mrs. Uh, Wheeler. As long as I can't help you. All now. right, Mrs. Wheeler, you can go get your shopping done. Well, I, I can't do much good here. No, you certainly can't. Goodbye and thank you, Mrs. Wheeler. Well, you'd think I didn't want to Will help. you show her out, Matt, please? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Now, would you say the man had a dark, medium, or light complexion, Mr. Case? Well, I'd say it was definitely dark. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Okay, dark hair? Yes, oh, yeah. that's right. Was cut very short, you couldn't miss it. Would you say he had a long head or a short round head? We had a very thin face. The head was long. Very heavy eyebrows. Dark eyes. Oh, wait a minute, they weren't so heavy. Heavier than yours. Well, not oh, like Oh, certainly heavier than heavy mine. Heavy. Look, I got a good look at him, oh, too. Now, just a minute, I please. Say, well, wait a minute, would you please I hold it, hold it. <laughs> A 
little more on the nose. Yeah, right, on the bridge of the nose, not so, not so straight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lieutenant, could I be excused for a second? Well, sure, go ahead, Mr. Kane. We've been in here over an hour, Ben. Okay. The squad room is crawling with reporters. We'll have to give them some action soon. Don't you think I'd like to give them some action? Oh, now, don't get jumpy. Ah, no, that's nearly it. That's pretty close to what he looked like. I think he had more of a pointed chin. You know, it stood out more. I don't know. That's pretty close. You've disagreed with everything I've said. Look, lady, I'm sorry. I just don't think his chin you was... You don't a... think anything. You just say no. But it I... don't look like oh, that. No. Say what you like, lady. Get as nasty as you want. I don't think please, he Please, now, a... please. Look, look. I, I know it's tough for everybody, but... It wouldn't but... be so tough if this here monkey now, was... Now, wait quiet. a minute, please. Wait a minute. I heard one of you say that it looked pretty much like the killer. I said. If the chin was more pointed. Yes, all right, but it's close. Yeah, well, it's close. close. All right, then. Uh, I hope I didn't take too long. Well, that's all right, Miss Case. Uh, take a look at the picture, please. You think it looks like the killer? Yes, that's very close. Now, if you'll just change uh, Thank the, you, uh, Mr. Case. Uh, get the picture, Matt, and let's get out of here. Now, here it is, boys. This is as close a description as we could get on the killer. Each one of you take one and start circulating in the area. Show it to everybody. Newspapers already have these, but they won't be out for a while. Hand them up, Quine. Right. Come on, man. Right. Well, where to? We'll start at the scene and work south and north. Hey, hey I just thought of something. What? I haven't had breakfast or lunch. I'm starved. It's an event you wait for for 12 months. The grand finals of Horace Heights' original youth opportunity program. And next Sunday night's the big night for 1950. The most talented young Americans Horace Height has ever discovered in his famous nationwide auditions, will be heard competing for the championship and the $5,000 grand prize. Arthur Olson, 17-year-old piano sensation from Minneapolis. City Barabas, the brilliant young coloratura. Jesse Owens, baritone, who left his shoeshine stand to win one of Horace Heights' quarterfinal rounds. You'll find them and the others on CBS next Sunday night when the Horace Height Original Youth Opportunity Program comes your way on most of these same stations. <laughs> Something I can do for you? Police. Oh. Oh, yes, sir. About the killing, huh? That's right. A couple of policemen were in earlier. I didn't see it. This man. Ever been in your store before? Well, I don't recognize him. You sure? Yeah, I think so. I don't think I've ever seen him before. You run the store alone? Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Want to bowl a few games? With your head, sure. Oh, that's very funny. There's a bar over there, Matt. You take it. I'll talk to whoever's in charge of the alleys. Right. Hey, you want an alley? No. Uh, you ever seen this guy before? You a cop? That's right. You ever see him? No. He the guy that killed all those people? Yeah. What a terrible thing that was. How long you been working here? Me? I run the place. Well, I hope he catch that guy. Ain't safe with a guy like that around. How many people you got working for you? Uh, just the people who might have seen this man if he came in. Well, let me see. There's Marge. She's the one over there serving the beer. Uh-huh. Who else? Uh, let's see. I got one waitress and two bartenders working in the bar. The bar's being checked. Yeah, let me see. My wife, Marge, the waitress, two bartenders, and my wife. Well, that's all that's working here outside of the pin boys. Okay. Let's talk to them. Sure, sure. Talk to my wife first if you want her. She's the one at the cash register. Uh-huh. When I opened the place, she took over the cash register. It figured. Tell me, you married? No. Congratulations. Yeah, 
Everything's seven blocks north, everything's six blocks south, and it doesn't look like we're going to get a thing. I'll try this one. What, the barbershop? Yeah. Hey, just have a seat, gentlemen. Get you next. Uh, we're the police. We want you to take a look at this picture. Police? Sure, let's see. Ever see him before? Uh, yeah, I think so. It looks like him. I got his hair yesterday. This is the guy I'm thinking of. Who is he? His name? Yeah, his name. <laughs> his name? I don't know. He, he's only been in here three or four times. He liked his hair short, like in the picture. He done something? Yeah, he's done something. Funny guy. You know, he's all talking about the army, about all the battles. He talked about in. where he lived. Well, he never talked about where he lived. Just about the army and how he wanted his hair cut. And how he didn't like the people in this town. What'd he do? He killed some of the people he didn't like in this town. He was the one? He killed all those people today? We think so. Holy gosh, I cut his hair. And he didn't tell you where he lived? He said nothing, but I know. At least I'm pretty sure. Where? A rooming house, block down the street. I seen him go in there once with the groceries. This side, on the corner, at the end of the block. Thanks. How do you like that? He killed all those people. I cut his hair. Yes? You the landlady? Yes, that's right. You want a room? Uh, police. We want to talk to you. Oh, all right. We'd like to come in. All right. What's wrong? Shh. Keep your voice down. It's about one of your rumors. One of my rumors? Uh, take a look at this picture. Oh, him. What's he done? Who is he? Named Fitch, Arthur Fitch. What's he done? Is he in? Yeah, it's been a couple of hours ago. It's still in his room, I think. What's he done? Where's his room? Second floor, first door. Where's your phone? One on the wall, the only one we got. You'll have to pay a nickel. How many other people in the building? It's just me. we got one vacancy. Everybody else is working. Mm -hmm, I see. Do you mind telling me what this is all about? We want Arthur Fitch on suspicion of murder. Murder? Mr. Sergeant murder? Grab, Captain Waldo. Keep your voice down. Hello, Captain. This is Sergeant Greb. Ben and I are in a boarding house on 103rd Street, 314. We think I got a man. Yeah, that's right. Name Arthur Fitch. A barber identified him. According to the landlady, he's up in his room now. No, 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 no. We'll wait for you. Right, Captain. He'll cover the area. Look up, sir. You'd better go outside, lady. Get off the street as quickly as possible. But my place. Lady, you've got a murderer upstairs. You want to stay here? All right. You go outside, Matt, and wait for Waldo. Stay I'll right stay here. Oh, good Lord. Don't move. Don't, don't shoot us, Arthur. Better put it down, Arthur. I'll kill you all if you move. You don't have a chance, son. I never do. Somebody's always trying to hurt me. I never have a chance. I said don't move. Oh. All right, Arthur. You think you're smart, don't you? You think you're pretty smart. I heard you talking on the phone. I heard you when you came in. I saw you coming down the block. I knew you'd get here sooner or later. Just haven't made up my mind what to do yet. Just haven't made up my mind. I feel so bad. Everybody makes me feel so bad. We don't want to hurt you, Arthur. You don't. You're lying. We just want to talk to you. Want to talk to me, huh? You want to talk to me, then you want to go out and tell people things about me. You want to make people talk about me. You want to make them hate me. We want to show you how to get out of here, Arthur. Show you what to do. Help you make up your mind. You're lying. We just thought we could help you, Arthur. You want to help me? That's right. How? How can you help me? Nobody around here wants to help me. Not since I got here. Nobody likes me. Just like that other town. Everybody's saying things about me, planning things. How can we get Arthur out of town? Arthur's no good. Let's run him out. <laughs> I showed him. We'll hide you, Arthur. I don't believe you. I don't know you. Well, sure you do. We've helped you before. You have? Sure, sure. We don't want you to get hurt. We'll hide you so you can't get hurt. You've helped me before? Sure. Don't you remember? No. Oh, we've helped you lots of times. The policeman. You call the police. Ah, we just said that. Yeah, so we could fool them. Get you out. You've helped me before? That's right, Arthur. We'll help you this time, too. When did you help me before? Lots of times when you were in trouble. Remember all the times you were in trouble? And how you got out of them, Arthur? How you got out of trouble? We helped you. 
You haven't forgotten us, have you, Arthur? Will you get me out of this trouble? Sure, we'll show you the way. Yeah. Yeah, please. Please help me. Come down the stairs. All right. Now, you've got to hurry. You, you're going to help me? Sure, sure, sure. Like we helped you in the Army. All the times you got in trouble. You were in the Army? Sure, we were in the Army. What's that? Well, it isn't anything, Arthur. Come on. No, now. no. We'll just... No, Mrs. Evans, come up here. You better do as Hurry up or I'll shoot the whole bunch of you. Yes. Oh, yes. Stairs. We'll go to my room so I can think. They won't hurt me while I got you. Where is he, Lieutenant? He's got the landlady upstairs in his room. He's got the machine pistol, too. Whole area is surrounded. Yeah, he's a complete paranoid. Really came apart of the seams. Thinks everybody hates him. What do we do? Well, he's killed seven people already. We can't take a chance on that poor landlady. We almost had him. Just another second, and we just about had him talked into thinking we were his only friends. I doubt if he'll trust anybody now. Come on, let's get outside. Oh, here comes Captain. Now, wave him back. The more cops Arthur spots, the more desperate he'll get. Well, we just can't let him sit up there. There's no telling I what... I got an idea, Matt. Stay close to the building. According to the landlady, that's his room right above us. No way to get up there. Well, there's a building across the street. If we can get into the second floor... Quine, go get a rifle. Can you spot him? No. I can see right into his room, but I... I can't see Arthur or the landlady. Probably sitting down. If he'd only get in front of that window. You know, we can't wait. Don't tell him when he's liable to start using that gun. Then we're no better off than when we started. We are if somebody can get him in front of that window. Well, how's that going to be done? Well, I'll worry about that after I see whether I can talk my way into his room. Uh, ben. Can you think of a better way? No, but how about me trying it? You're a better shot than I am. <sighs> okay. I hope you're a better shot. Remember, if I do get him in that window, I'm the fat one. friend, Arthur. Oh, why don't you go away? I still want to help you. Why do you lie like that? Why don't you admit it? You want to kill me. You've got to trust me, Arthur. I know a way to get you out. Now listen. Listen, you better leave. I've got Mrs. Evans in here and I'll shoot her if anybody tries to get me out of here. Please. Please go away. Then just look out the window, Arthur. You can see the way to get out yourself. I don't want to look out the window. Go away, I'm warning you. Then just let me talk to you. I can't hurt you by just talking to you. I don't want to hear anything you got to say. I feel bad. Oh, you. Arthur, if I can prove I'm your friend, if I can prove I've helped you before, will you trust me? You can't prove that. Well, let me talk to you. I'll prove it. It's getting late. It's getting late. I got to make up my mind what to do. Arthur. How can you prove that you want to help me? If I can prove that I helped you other times, will you believe me? I won't say. Supporting Everett Sloan in the voice of Company A were Lillian Bayef, John Daner, Barney Phillips, Jack Crucian, and Sam Pierce. Listen. Listen again next week when we return with the diary of Sophonia Winter, starring Mercedes McCambridge. Another tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. CBS Radio Network. You said if I could prove I was in the army with you, you'd let me help you. Were you in the army? With you, Arthur. In the war? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Infantry? Just like you. Yeah. I was in the army for five years. Seven battles. 
Were you with me then? That's right. I helped you all those times. Oh, yeah. Oh, terrible times. I, I was decorated. Yeah. You did a wonderful job. Yeah. I got the Purple Heart. I was wounded. Well, I know. Don't you remember in the hospital? I helped you. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody else was with you. Another man. You both helped me. That's right. Oh, you don't know what it's like in war, Mrs. Evans. He'll tell you. All that killing. Have to kill him or get killed yourself. I can help you out of this, Arthur. Just like those terrible times in the war. How? Just look out of the window. Out of the window? Yeah. I got a car down there. On the street. Right below the window. I don't know. Oh, they'll never get you. I don't know. Well, you've got a gun. Yeah. Well, look out the window. Look at the car. You'll come with me? Sure. Sure. I'll help you. Why do people always have to hate me? We'll climb out of that window, get in that car. I made them all sorry for not liking me. Well, you see the car? No. No, I don't. It's all right, Mrs. Evans. It's all right. I didn't see the car. There wasn't any car, Arthur. Oh. Oh. I, I gotta tell you something. Go ahead. I, I, I feel terrible about something. I, I, I gotta tell you. All right, Arthur. I'm really ashamed. But I, I never really was in the army. I just made it up. <laughs> the lineup. For before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identification, please remember the number assigned to the person. The Lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Grebb, is written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Lee Patrick, Elliot Reed, Wilms Herbert, Howard McNear, Sidney Miller, Clayton Post, Joe Duvall, and Virginia Gregg. The Lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> Every Friday evening on CBS, the handsome young cop, Danny Clover, brings you his latest adventure patrolling the theatrical district of New York. Broadway's my beat, says Danny, and his stories involve Apple Annies, Chorus Girls, Society Women, Gamblers, Theatrical Producers, all of the picturesque characters that are found in Times Square. Be listening for this fine mystery series, Broadway's my beat, Friday evening on most of these same stations. Dan Coverly speaking. This is CBS, the Star's Address, the Columbia Broadcasting System.